is Mrs. Wainwright's math class, chapter 3, lesson 1, multiplying by powers of 10. This is a large review from chapter 1, lesson 1D, and chapter 1, lesson 1E. Remember, if you see a number that's greater than 1, greater has the R's, that means we're going to move our decimal to the right. And if you're multiplying by a power of 10 less than 1, less has the L, we're moving our decimal to the left. Today's learning target, by the end of today's lesson, you should confidently be able to say, I can multiply by a power of 10 by simply moving the decimal. So a review screen from Chapter 1, Lesson 1D, 1 times anything equals itself, and anything times 1 equals itself. So for 1 times anything equals, equals itself, I have 1 times 5 equals 5, because 1 times anything, being the 5, equals itself, the 5. That means I have 1 5 times, and that answer is going to be 5. That's what I have all together. The example for anything times 1 equals itself, well, 5 times 1 equals 5. So I have 5 1 time. How many is that all together? That's 5. So again, anything times 1 equals itself, or 1 times anything equals itself. And when we multiply by a number that's greater than 1, the product, or the answer, will be greater than the number you started with. So when you multiply by a number greater than 1, the answer is greater than the number that you started with. Let's see how this works. If I take 5, which will be my starting number, and multiply it by 10, which is a number that's greater than 1, my answer should be greater than the number I started with. Well, what's 5 times 10? 50. And 50 is greater than the 5 we started with. And if we look at the pictures, we see that that makes sense. Because so I started with 5, and I'm going to multiply that, or I'm going to write that 10 times. That's 2 times. 3 times, 4 times, 5 times, 6 times, 7 times, 8 times, 9 times, and 10 times. So if I take 5 and I show it 10 times, my answer is going to be greater than the number I started with. And remember, we can put those two facts together to find a trick when multiplying by a power of 10 number. That's a number with a 1 and zeros. So when given the problem 74 times 10, and notice that 10 is a number that has a 1 with zeros, therefore it's a power of 10 number, we can simply look at that power of 10 number and say, is that number 1 greater than 1 or less than 1? And when I look at 10, I know that it is greater than 1. So I'll take the other number, write it down. If necessary, I'll remove the invisibility cloak to find my decimal. I know that 10 is greater than 1, and greater has R's. The R's tell me to move my decimal to the right. So I will cross up my decimal and move it one place to the right. The only problem here is there's no digit to move it around. Well, anytime that happens, I simply put in a place value 0. Now I have a digit to move it around, and I move my decimal one place to the right. How did I know to move it only one place? Well, back on my original problem, this 10 has one zero, and that shows me that I have to move my decimal one place to the right. So after doing this work, I see that 74 times 10 will equal 740. Since the decimal is less than my number, I can write that without the decimal or with the decimal. The choice is mine. Either is correct. So let's take a look at example number one, which also came from chapter one, lesson 1D. 853 times 10. Well, I see that there's a 10 in there. That's a power of 10 number, a number with a 1 and zeros. So I'm going to find the other number, 853, and copy it down. If there's commas, I get rid of them. I just copy down the number as I see it. I look at that power of 10 number and I say, is that number greater than 1 or less than 1? Well, 10 is greater than 1. And I remember that if it's greater than 1, greater has the R's, and R means I move my decimal to the right. How many places will I move it to the right? 
Well, that depends upon the number of zeros in my power of 10 number. And this is a 10, so it has one zero. Therefore, I'll be moving my decimal one place to the right. Now I'm ready to solve this problem, but I see that my 853 does not have a decimal in it. But we know that every number has a decimal. And if you don't see it, it's at the end. You simply have to remove the invisibility cloak. So I remove my invisibility cloak. I cross out my decimal. I need to move it one place to the right. There's nothing to move it around, so I'll add a place value zero, and now I can move my decimal one place to the right. Recopy that answer, and I have eight, five, three, zero, and then the decimal would come after that. I can choose to put it, or I don't have to. I'm going to count my digits for my commas, one, two, three, comma, so my final answer is 8,530. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number one right now. Let's take a look at example number two. And I know this says a three, but that's because I copied it from chapter one, lesson 1D. This was example three in that video. We will change the number afterwards because when I copy it, I can't change it right away. So I have 734 and 6 tenths times 1,000. And I see that there's a power of 10 number here. It's the number ha that has the one and zeros. That tells me I can simply move my decimal. So first I focus in on the other number and I copy it down as is, 734 and 6 tenths. And then I'm going to focus in on my power of 10 number. That's a 1,000. Is 1,000 greater than 1 or less than 1? Well, of course, 1,000 is greater than 1. And greater has the R's, and that means that tells me that I'm going to move my decimal to the right. How many places will I move my decimal to the right? Go back to my power of 10 number and count the zeros. One, two, three zeros. Therefore, I'll be moving my decimal three places to the right. This number has a decimal already, so I simply have to cross out the decimal. I'm going to move it three places to the right. That's one. Uh-oh, I don't have any of the digits to move it around. That's fine. I can add place value zeros. There's a zero. Now I move it two places. At another place value zero, now I've moved my decimal three places to the right. One, two, three. Every time you move it, you're moving it between numbers. Remember we taught you at the beginning of school how to cut properly in line? When you're moving a decimal, it's like cutting the number. So make sure that you cut properly. Don't half cut. Cut all the way. So I moved it three places. I put my decimal in. And my final answer is 7, 3, 4, 6, 0, 0. I can put the decimal at the end, or I don't have to. I am going to need to put in commas. So I count 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3. That's it. So my final answer is 734,600. Notice that I started, my starting number was 734 and 6 tenths. I multiplied it by a number that's greater than 1, so my answer of 734,600 is greater than the number I started with. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 2 right now. Let's take a look at example number 3. I know it says 4, but for this lesson it's example number 3. I have 3,275 times 100. I see that I'm multiplying by a power of 10, a number that has a 1 and zeros. So I focus in on the other number, which is 3,275. I'll rewrite that number down, but remember when I rewrite a number that has commas, I leave the commas out, because that's going to change when I move the decimal. So I ignore the comma when writing the number, therefore I simply write 3, 2, 7, 5. I'm multiplying by 100, which is greater than 1. The r's in greater remind me that my decimal moves to the right. There are two zeros in 100, so that reminds me that I'll be moving my decimal two places to the right. So I go down to my 3,275, and I have to move my decimal two places, but I don't see a decimal. So we remove the invisibility cloak. The decimal is at the end. Now we can cross it out. And in order to cut or move two places to the right, I have to add a place value zero. I can move it one place, add another place value zero, now I've moved it two places to the right. So my answer will be three, two, seven, five, zero, zero. I can choose to put a decimal in at the end if I want to, or I don't have to, and I'll count for my commas. One, two, 
three, comma, one, two, three. My final answer is 327,500. Remember that end decimal is not necessary, but I can choose to put it in there if I want to, so it is optional as long as there are no digits after it. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number three right now. Now please stop the video and complete worksheet numbers four, five, and six. So the next half of our lesson is actually a review from chapter one, lesson one E. And in this lesson we learn that when we multiply a number by a number less than one, the product or answer will be less than the number we started with. So when we multiply by a number less than one, the answer will be less than the number we started with. Let's take a look at an example. We start with the number five. We're going to multiply it by zero and one-tenth. One-tenth of a Hershey bar is less than one whole Hershey bar. So that number is less than one. Therefore, my answer should be less than what we started with. So my answer should be less than the five. Let's take a look at this in picture form. I have five times of the number one-tenth. So that's one-tenth the second one-tenth, the third one-tenth, the fourth, fourth one-tenth, and the fifth one-tenth. Let's count to see what my total amount of chocolate is. I have one-tenth, plus one-tenth is two-tenths, plus another tenth is three-tenths, and another one is four-tenths, and another one is five-tenths. So I have five-tenths. What would that look like on a Hershey bar? My Hershey bar broken into ten sections, and I have one, two, three, four, five of them. Do I have a whole Hershey bar up there? No, I don't. That's why my whole number is zero. And then I have my five tenths, so zero and five tenths. I multiplied my starting number five by a number that was less than one, one tenth, and my answer, five tenths, was less than the number I started with. And again, we can put those two facts together to find a trick when multiplying by a power of ten number that's less than one. For example, 0 and 1 tenth, or 0 and 1 hundredth, or 0 and 1 thousandth, or 0 and 1 ten thousandth. There's a 1 and zeros, so that's a power of 10 number, and they're all less than 1. So I have, if I have the number 74 that I'm starting with, and I multiply that by 0 and 1 tenth, I say, oh, that 0 and 1 tenth is a 1 with zeros, that's a power of 10 number. So I'm going to take my other number, which is 74, I'll rewrite it. And again, I say this is a 1 with 0, so I know it's a power of 10 number. It's a decimal number, and I know that decimal numbers are less than a whole. I have 0 whole Hershey bars and 1 tenth of a Hershey bar, so this is less than 1. The L in less reminds me that I will move my decimal to the left. How many places will I move it to the left? Well, there's one zero, so I'll have to move it one place to the left. So go to my 74 on the right. I don't see a decimal, so I'm going to remove my invisibility cloak. There's my decimal. Because there's one zero in my power of 10 number, that tells me that I'll move it one place to the left. So I cross out my decimal, and I move it one place to the left, put my new decimal in. Rewrite my number, which is 7 decimal four or seven and four tenths. So I started with the number 74, I multiplied it by one tenth, which is less than one, and my answer of seven and four tenths is less than the number I started with. And this is actually example number seven, 762 times zero and one hundredth. I see that I have a power of ten number, a one with zeros, so I'm gonna focus in on my other number, 762, and write it down. 0 and 1 hundredth is less than 1, so I know I have to move my decimal to the left. I go back into the number and there are two zeros, 1, 2, so I'll be moving my decimal two places to the left. I look at my 762 and I don't see a decimal, so I'll remove the invisibility cloak, put it in. Now I can cross out my decimal and move it 1, two places to the left. Put my new decimal right in there. Remember, cut properly when moving decimals. Let's rewrite that number. I have 7 decimal 6 2, which is 7 and 62 hundredths. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 7 right now. 
This is actually example number eight. I have 2,710,541 and 26 hundredths times zero and one tenth. I notice that my zero and one tenth is a power of ten number, a one with zeros. So I'll focus on my other number and I'll rewrite it, ignoring all commas. Decimal stay, but I ignore the commas. There we go, I rewrote it without the commas. I'm going to multiply that by 0 and 1 tenth, and I look at that number and say, okay, this is less than 1, so I'll be moving my decimal to the left. How many places? Well, that depends on the number of zeros. 1, 0, so I'll be moving it one place to the left. Cross up my decimal, move it one place to the left, and I have my new answer. Let's rewrite it. 2, 7, 1, 0, 5, 4, decimal, 1, 2, 6. Count for commas. Remember, I count starting at my ones column. I do not put commas in my decimal. So the number just in for my, before my decimal is a four. That's one, two, three, comma. And that's my final answer, 271,054 and 126 thousandths. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number eight right now. Please stop the video again and complete worksheet numbers 9 through 11. Let's review. Anything times 1 is itself, and 1 times anything is itself. So when you multiply by 1, your answer does not change. It stays the same as the number you started with. When you multiply by a number that's greater than 1, your answer will be greater than the number you started with. When you multiply it by a power of 10 number greater than 1, that's like a 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, a number that has a 1 with zeros, you can simply move the decimal. Since the number is greater, the r's in greater mean you move your decimal to the right, and the number of zeros tell, me, tell you how many places to move the decimal to the right. If there isn't a, a digit to move around, you can add a place value 0 to have something to move around. When you multiply by a number that's less than 1, the product of the answer will be less than the number you started with. When you're multiplying by a base 10 number or a power of 10 number that's less than 1, meaning it has a 1 with zeros, you can simply move the decimal. And if that number is less than 1, less means you move your decimal to the left. L for less is the same as the L for left. The number of zeros in your number tell you how many places to move it to the left. So hopefully, since this is a review lesson from chapter 1, by the end of this lesson you can confidently say, I can multiply by a power of 10 by simply moving the decimal.